let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Gird up for eternal life. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's foes shall be there of his own household. Golden text, Mark chapter 8. Verses 37 to 38. Or oh, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. A warning for humanity, quote, brethren, the text summarizes the theme of our gospel. Whosoever lacks the love of Christ in him is already perished. You may claim to love your neighbor, or your father, or your mother, brother, and sister, but if there is no love of Christ in you, you are heading towards eternal doom. If you love Christ, you must forsake the material things of this world and follow him. For it is stated categorically that you must love your God with all your might. Therefore, if you should dare love your mother, father, brother, sister, house or food more than your God, you will certainly perish. If your children, your father, mother, brother, or sister, do not also love Christ more than any other thing, it means they all are perished. God has been completely neglected because everybody in the world goes after his or her own benefits. People often think that what they will, uh, people, people often think of what they will eat and wear and so on. Nobody ever think of how best to put the injunctions of God into practice. This situation has seriously constituted all the problems of every inhabitant of the world and if not for the coming of Christ and the remission of our sins through his crucifixion the entire world would have totally perished. Everybody on earth is after unrewarding material benefits and nobody cares about how to worship God or how to love Him sincerely. Every woman in the whole world is concerned about how to marry a handsome man and the man a beautiful woman. No one consciously thinks of surrendering his or herself duly to Christ and unfortunately this situation has caused the entire world to fail. The people's unrestricted love for food 
and wine our money and so on causes them to lustfully deviate from the path of rectitude. Our God is a jealous God. That is why he decided to come down by himself to lead man to the satisfactory path of rectitude. He comes so that those who have fallen apart, those who have totally neglected him, and those who have devoted all their interest to the mundane things of this world shall retrace their steps and then follow the path of righteousness without restriction. Brethren, if not for the selfless love that God has for mankind, the entire world would have perished. That is why we always sing in one of our spiritual choruses. Thus, thank you Lord, thank you Father, for coming to salve man. Thank you Lord, for you do not act like man. Brethren, for this reason, you have all causes to rejoice and glorify God for voluntarily coming to salvage this undeserving mankind. Hitherto, everybody had completely deviated from God and headed towards perdition. And if this situation were to be allowed to continue, and progress as it is presently, man would have totally come short of God's kingdom. Fornication now seriously becomes food for every man, and so it is high, and so it is with stealing and, and killing and fighting, segregation and such other vices. But now, God has kindly come to save and totally draw everybody unto himself. Many of your carnality has percolated so deeply into your body that you could not do without your wife or husband or your friend even for a second. But now you can satisfactorily say, you can satisfactorily stay for years without ever thinking of all those things. God is the cause and the effect. Brethren, some of you profess bitterly that your mother's our fathers in laws are very wicked, and so you have to leave your matrimonial homes. I now ask, is that really the cause? Do you not know that God has many ways of calling people unto himself? Without these obstacles, hindrances, and problems, how would you have remembered God? And if not, how would you have been saved? In the scriptures it is said, Unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. How can a rich man enter into the kingdom of God after he had been so comfortable with all the material benefits of this world? Now, kindly tell him to baptize. He will turn around and ask you for the meaning of baptism and so on. Tell me, how such a person would inherit God's very selective salvation? That is why it is clearly stated in Matthew chapter 12 verse 29 that no one can ever break into the house of a strong man if he did not first of all capture him and bind his legs and arms. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods 
except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. That was in Matthew chapter 12 verse 29. Brethren, this situation can rightly be compared with that of God and man. And the only way that God can successfully capture a man for himself is by making sure he is materially paralyzed. Beloved brethren, the love of God for mankind is very great. But some of you seem not to realize it. Besides, it is not an easy task for anybody to be changed by another person. It is God alone who can adequately change every man and not any human being. For instance, if you go now and tell a rich man to sell all that he has and follow God, it would mean that you wish to find yourself in the prison custody. But someday God will appear to him and demand for his rights. At such time, he would say to God, Have you forsaken me? But that is the time that God is very much close to him. In the same token, at any time you claim that you are very close to God, that is when you are unfortunately very far from God. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Beloved brethren, if someone is a drunkard or a fornicator or a thief, but is not a vegetarian, how will it be possible for such a person to enter into the kingdom of God? Do you now see how the wisdom of God surpasses that of man? Practically, all the things you witness in this generation happens to be so so that man may not perish. The coming of the Holy Spirit at this end of time surely proves that God really loves mankind. Hence, everything that happens in human life is for the glory of God to manifest. If Peter on that eventful night had caught some amount of fish, do you think he would have hastily accompanied Christ when he called him. All these things called problems are not as such, but the means through which God extends his call to mankind. For if it were not true these ways, how would you know God or come to brotherhood authentically? If you claim that it was not a problem that had brought you into brotherhood of the cross and star, you are a liar and you are not yet a brotherhood member. That is why when such a person is told to fast, he could not. And when he is told to forsake sin, he would not consider it. Those therefore are not yet true brotherhood of a truth. Whosoever seeks for God does not find God, but whosoever God seeks for, he will quickly find him. Now, tell me what you would have given Paul when he was such an ardent persecutor and not yet an apostle of Christ. What would you have given him to induce him to surrender himself to Christ? Therefore, if God does not change any man, if God does not extend his call to anyone, none would easily follow God. Who can run away from God? Brethren, when God told jo Jonah to go and preach to the inhabitants of Nineveh, did he agree to go? 
he ran, he rather foolishly attempted to run away. But on his way inside the ship, something tragically happened to him. He was swallowed by a whale and right there inside the belly of the whale, he decided to hearken unto the voice of God. Who told you that somebody causes all the problems that come your way? When God asked Moses to tell Pharaoh to set free the children of Israel, Pharaoh harshly and rudely ordered Moses to disappear from his presence. Moses went the second time and still had the same treatment. Then God himself took a decision and dispatched a series of terrible incidents of calamity into the land of Egypt. From then, Pharaoh quickly released the children of Israel. Therefore, brethren, it is not at all safe to treat God disdainfully. Moreover, if God does not change somebody, and if God does not extend his call to somebody, nobody can follow him. In the same way, when you are told to observe Thursday fasting, you refuse. But when you are done and on the verge of a coma, then you will start right there to observe even one month's fasting <clears throat> without being told to do so by anyone. Therefore, for anything you see happening in your life, do not ask rigid questions, neither should you prove to know anything while in God's presence. Brethren, all the sickness and problems that consistently befall you are the simple ways that God uses in calling man unto himself. Basically, if you want to break into a strong man's house and if you do not first of all capture him and bind his hands and feet, you will find it totally impossible. Therefore, anybody who safely finds himself in this kingdom should have every cause to rejoice for it is God who has kindly called him. Those you are seeing outside now have not yet been called by God and fear not for God is the beginning. He is the middle and the end of everything. If the Father does not reveal himself to you, you cannot know him. And still, if it is not his will for you to know him, you would not know him. So brethren, every one of you who is already here in this kingdom, coming here as a result of one problem or the other, therefore, you should not start bragging that it was nothing that had brought you here. Every problem that befalls you, be it sickness or court cases or ill luck or poverty and the possible are the possible ways that God uses in calling you unto himself. In this regard, brethren, you have every cause to rejoice. For if God had not called you unto himself before now, you would have perished. Like in the case of our brother Paul, God had known the type of person he was. That was why he caused him to suffer hernia even unto his death. For if it were not because of that hernia, our brother Paul would have run away and deserted God long before then. Therefore, in order that God might sustain and maintain you for himself, he must intentionally dispatch one kind of sickness or the other to come and make 
and abode perpetually in you until further notice. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 36. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's falls shall be they of his own household. Beloved brethren, have you heard that? If it were not true these ways, God would not have people who would worship him. You can recall that young lad who had wanted to follow Christ. But due to the carnal requirements of this world, he retraced his steps and fall apart by requesting to bury his father first. But Christ warned him, saying, Let the dead bury the dead. You go and preach the glory of God. In spite of that, and since that time, as he returned from burying his father, Brethren, some of you here would have decided to serve God, but due to carnal inclinations in you, you tend to check your steps and so tilt to the part of the world in disguise and bid farewell to your family. And once you have you will not return. Brethren, it should not be a thing of surprise when you realize that right from the time you were baptized into this fold, there have been situations of serious disharmony between you and your family. At times, it would rise to such a dimension that you would look up and ponder within yourself what type of a father you are serving. Sometimes you will undergo fasting, but the problem gets severer. At this stage, you would start to tremble and accuse people indiscriminately. You would even backslide from the fold, quite ignorantly. I now want you to realize from today that it is neither you nor your family members that are responsible for these problems. Rather, it is your father who wants to seize and own you exclusively for himself. He mercilessly uses these tedious ways to separate you from fornication. He uses this medium to separate you from being totally dependent on your husband or wife. He uses this teaching still to draw the entire children of God to himself. And through this way, he manifests his glory in you. Therefore, be warned from today onward. Do not attribute any of your problems to either a ghost or a mermaid. Furthermore, do not from henceforth attribute any sickness of yours to your forefathers or your foremothers. For all these things happen so that you may know your Creator. Brethren, prior to now, at any time, Brotherhood was on outing to convert souls for the Father, people who saw them would run away and hide. Some would wickedly throw stones at them, while some often said, Do you don't listen to them, they are bloodsuckers, and so forth. Brethren, but look at Brotherhood of the Cross and start with now. 
do you see how the Father is working his miracles in a very surprising way? For some of you, when you were newly baptized into this fold, you happily proclaimed that all the members of your family would also be baptized into brother of the cross and star. Accordingly, you rushed and start telling them about brotherhood. Consequently, they started rebuking you and seriously even to the extent of ejecting you from the family house. No, no, that nobody is responsible for all these. Since God had called you unto, into brotherhood, no matter what somebody who tell you, it could not change your mind. It is a serious thing of surprise that when you invite your brother to join you in your cult practices or in committing any evil, he would quickly obey and follow you. But when, on the contrary, you invite him to come to brother of the cross and star, that is when your relationship with him will come to an end automatically automatically brethren it is a pity that your carnal father or mother or children or brothers and sisters and the mundane things of this world constitute your obstacles on your ways of following god when once your interests are deeply rooted in mundane things, the love of God will not have root in you. That is the reason when God comes, he will first of all separate you entirely from them and then bring you unto himself. He is the one who keenly separates you from your mother, your father, husband, wife, children, neighbor, friend, and partner to hunt to himself. And nobody else is responsible for all these things. He does this because before now, the time you should have used in serving God, you lavished it on pleasing your wife or husband. The time you should have gainfully used in attending women's or men's fellowship, you spent it on thinking of how you would be able to cater for your family. The time you should have used in attending choir practices, you wasted it on school lessons and other related issues. That is why God has come to separate you from carnality unto himself. Since when? He separated our father Abraham from his family for 75 years. Up till date, he has not reunited with them. The same thing, have, the same thing was with Christ. After his birth, when Herod wanted to kill him, he was taken to Egypt. From Egypt, back to Nazareth and so on and so forth. He has never really settled down comfortably with his parents, especially at the onset of his ministry. If Herod had successfully killed the baby Jesus, he would not have been the Christ of today. You claim you are being separated in your community. This is so because if they did not adequately persecute you, you would not have run away from them and followed God. God is really jealous about his beloved ones. For this reason, he carefully separates you entirely unto himself. Besides, God does not want you to perish because God does not want you to perish 
because of continuously engaging yourself with those things that does not bring glory to him. Hence, it is your place to really rejoice and diligently practice his injunction so that you would not perish the second time. Again, whosoever loves God and also loves his or her brother, sister, or mother, father, or any of the mundane things of this world, the love of God is not in him, and so he is a liar. Therefore, it is now your place to examine yourself carefully, your claim to be a true follower of God, because if you do not forsake all these things and carry your cross and follow Christ, you are really wasting your time in this kingdom. God called you totally unto himself. For this reason, you have to do away with carnality and surrender yourself completely for God to use you and manifest his glory in you. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Mark chapter 8, verses 37 to 38. Or oh, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Brethren, have you heard that? For some of you, what will cause you to perish is your ardent devotion in the activities of the mundane things of this world and your inability to hearken unto God's injunctions and instructions. Beloved brethren, since it was true his infinite love that you were called into this kingdom, this is your right time to do away with carnal things and honor him with all your might. This is the time for you to devote all your interest to serving your most high God. This is your time to forsake all evil tendencies and seriously hearken unto his instruction. But if you keep proving stubborn, if you continue to devote your interest for the mundane things of this world, you will perish along with it, as it is stated in the scripture. You are the branches and I am the vine. If you abide in me, you must bear the same fruits that I bear. Brethren, do you realize that if you do not surrender yourself, entirely to Christ, you would be quite empty. There would be no Holy Spirit in you, and as such, you have no life. The reason why God has separated you for, for himself is for you to acquire everlasting life. He does not want you to perish along with the world. God is our comforter, he is our mother, He's our father, he's our friend. Indeed, God is everything for us. Therefore, do not seek for anything mundane again. Stand firm and serve God so that you will reap favorably in due season. There is no gain whatsoever in materialism such as money, cars, and houses, or husband, or wife, or children, etc. The only thing that is profitable is the practice of the injunctions of God. Therefore, concerning this, right now, do away with material things and follow God. Do away with carnality and surrender yourself unto God's services, for He alone is the only way unto salvation. 
Do not be ashamed of following God in the right path. Do not listen to what people are saying, but decide and do away with all mundane things. Surrender yourself to God so that when that time comes, you will reign with Him forever and ever. No matter the amount of money you may acquire, no matter how your parents or your family love you, all these are without benefits for you. The only safe thing is for you to surrender yourself totally by doing away with all forms of carnal things. Therefore, if you decide now to do away with all those things and sincerely hearken unto God's instructions, the everlasting life will unfailingly be yours. Let it not be that because of your loose conduct that you lost this glory. Let it not be food or husband or wife or any mundane thing of the world that will cause you to miss the everlasting life awaiting you in this kingdom. The children of God choir has rendered in one of their pieces that two people will stay at one place but one shall be taken away. Where will the other one then go to? Brethren, therefore, if you are opportuned to find yourself in this kingdom, carefully put this gospel into fervent practice. Forget about money. Forget about wife and husband or children or car or school, friend, house and clothes. In fact, forget about all carnal things and enthusiastically surrender yourself to the services of God. Forget about whether you have eaten or not. Forget about whether you are naked or not. Just put this gospel into practice and you will surely have everlasting life. Redwin, a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.